Ah. Hello guys, I am not at home. Yeah, unfortunately my dad got a bit unwell and um, I'm up, up north, north of England, um, uh, spending some time with him uh, whilst he gets well. So I'm not going to be able to make uh, some of my usual kinds of videos. I'm going to be making videos here, one take, and uh, see how it goes. I mean, most of my videos are one take, but um, what I mean is I haven't got Premiere and things, I haven't got my computer up here. Um, it's actually worked out quite well because uh, recently I had some problems with my computer last week. So it means that I uh, won't be able to... Um, edit any videos anyway for the next week and a half till I wait for some new computer parts to arrive. Um. So, I've not really sung today, I'm just trying to warm up a little bit. Loads of, well I say loads, a few people are asking me about falsetto and, he and legit head voice, whatever you want to call it. How do I get it so clean and pure sounding without any clutter? So I want to go into a little bit of depth about it. This video will probably be entitled something like uh, falsetto the right way or something. Now, one of the problems people have is that there's quite a lot of general comments that you read um, on forums and things that revolve around, well, he can sing high, but he's in falsetto, so somehow that's not legitimate. And what that does, it tends to devalue a certain skill set. If you listen to some of uh, some countertenors in classical singing, and uh, Andreas Scholl being one of the best examples... They sing purely on that legit sound, and they sing it very clean, very free, very released, very efficient. Um, and you can term it falsetto, but the, the reality is to sing on that type of sound that well is tricky. It's hard. It's a very difficult skill set. Now, it's not necessarily physically the most demanding. Um, physically, in terms of the work you have to do in the larynx, it's certainly not as physically demanding as singing in full voice, which requires a lot of, uh, a lot of grunt, so to speak. Not strain, but a lot of, a lot of focus, a lot of really focused energy in a very specific spot. Falsetto, on the other hand, is easier typically to coordinate physically, but it requires just as much skill, and in some, in some sense, it requires a little bit more skill because it's very delicate and vulnerable to um, any types of nerves or any type of uh, any type of problem will immediately become apparent. Typically, in full voice, you can get away with a few more technical issues, and it will you'll kind of blast through it. Think of somebody like Bono from U2. He's a very good example. Great singer. If you listen to the Joshua Tree, one of their most famous records, technically there are some t there are some problems in terms of not necessarily it sounds bad, just in terms of. Um, if you approach it that way, you're probably not going to have a voice that lasts that long. Yeah, a lot of really good technique, and then maybe 20-25% just a little bit off, and you can hear it. The chords come apart a little bit. There's a bit of grind on the chords, and when you're singing that full out, that the chords slapping together and grinding the wrong way, it tends to uh, have a lot of negative effect very quickly. Whereas technical issues um, on more, on lighter sounds, you know, um, you're less likely to get damage as quick. Um, anyway, falsetto. The main thing I want to get across is that we have to learn to isolate the correct muscles when we're doing this. The main issue people have when they're trying to release up higher, it doesn't matter, the sound doesn't need to be loud, doesn't need to be anything really. What it just needs to be is it needs to be very, um, very well coordinated. So what typically people have is as they go up, and we'll warm, I'm going to warm, try and warm up into some of this legit sound um, as we go, <coughs> Basically, yeah, I'm trying to ease into it, but what we have is 
This is the problem most people have, is as they go higher, they start to squeeze on the arytenoids and you get this. You kind of get a... This kind of squeeze, the horizontal squeeze. You get more of that coming in as you go up higher. Um, part of the reason for that is the association with high notes that people have. They tend to want to grab more. So you tend to get this. Rather than a release on a... there, we tend to kind of get a this, uh, 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 this type of horizontal squeeze coming in. So you can, you can work on this in chest voice, believe it or not. This is the basic principle. If we have like a, like a nice even amount of squeeze as we go through. If this starts to happen, more squeeze on the arytenoids at the top than the bottom. Now, like I said, you could apply this any, at any point in the range, but people tend to go make this technical error as they go up towards the, uh, the, the head voice and the legit type sounds. They'll tend to more of that uh, uh, e, rather than staying on that arytenoid squeeze that you start with yeah so we're looking for you can do this with a lip bubble as well rather than squeeze we have we have the arytenoids wanting to do more work up there and that's what typically inhibits people from that top range is those arytenoids want to squeeze more rather than once those arytenoids come in it will start to feel harder So that is without the squeeze. If we have the squeeze there, it wants to push versus releasing. Yeah, no extra arytenoid squeeze coming in versus larynx is coming up. This is coming in versus. So as I go up, I'm not allowing those, those arytenoid muscles to, uh, 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 to add any of that horizontal squeeze in. So what happens when we add that is, the cords rather than being like edges, they start to thicken up. We're taking up more weight. Now, you can see on that, but the problem is, if we change the arytenoid squeeze and we're in that habit, that everything higher is always going to become harder. Versus if we've got even arytenoid squeeze. <laughs> now we've got even arytenoid squeeze. Now if I wanted to go into a more of a mix sound, we will have... Yeah, a very light mix. Go, 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 Now you notice I've got a rhythmoid squeeze at the start. Go, go, go. But I'm not adding to it. Go, 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 go. It will feel squeezy. Versus keeping that arrhythmoid, the horizontal squeeze, the same. Go, 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 go. 
Yeah? So a lot of learning this technique and learning to sing better is asking yourself this question. Can you keep that arytenoid squeeze nice and even as you're changing pitch? Because if you can, that means you're able to keep one muscle group relaxed and in an, or give an, with an even, even amount of tension, shall we say, whilst adjusting the other muscle group, yeah? And this is what I talk, when I'm talking about muscle isolation, using muscles independently, this is what I'm talking about. You have to be able to maintain even squeeze on those arytenoids whilst moving up and down in your range. Because if you can't do that, high notes are always going to be hard, yeah? And if you can do that, you're always thinking about tilting more, releasing more as you go up higher. High notes become easier because you're not uh, 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 adding that arytenoid squeeze more and more as you go up higher. Always hitting that ceiling, always feeling like it's heavy as you go up higher, yeah? Um, so, think about this if you want to sing on falsetto. Well, if you want to do it like a Jeff Buckley or a Matt Bellamy or a Tom York, it ain't easy to do. It's tough. That's why very few male singers can do it, because um, it requires a lot of skill to do. Um, once you get over that hurdle, then you can start working on it. Right, what, what do I need to do? I need to keep those arytenoids nice and even as I go up. Keep that squeeze on the horizontal nice and even. And I need to learn to release release and tilt and get higher in pitch without without adding any of that arytenoid squeeze. If you think about it this way and you start thinking about and noting what you're doing, a lot of you out there are going to notice, oh yeah, I am adding some of that squeeze on the horizontal as I go up. And I'm saying to you, you don't need to. Learn to let go of that arytenoid squeeze, learn to release upwards and keep that arytenoid squeeze super even. You can learn this really on any sound, but the reason it's quite good to learn it on that legit type sound is as soon as arytenoid squeeze comes in, you really hear that, uh, uh, you really hear that squeeze versus No arytenoid squeeze is coming in. Well, there's just enough to set set the compression and the closure, but as I go up, notice there's no extra uh, uh, uh coming in, so I don't need to push, I just release. And then it gets easy, man. Um, there's also a lot of other things you've got to think about, like as I'm changing vowels, I've got to maintain that correct position with the larynx and things, but that's for another video. But uh, I'm hoping this has helped you understand how to sing falsetto the right way and why it's hard and why it gets harder as you go higher if you approach it the wrong way. Have a nice day guys, I'll see you soon, bye bye.